Hey, 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 welcome back to the Passive Buddies podcast. And today we are increasing your income. We are maximizing your earnings. We're going to give you as many tips as we can for a successful YouTube affiliate marketing business. Now, of course, as usual, and I wouldn't do this without him, I have my co-host Brandon Duff here, who is pretty good on YouTube, who makes quite a bit of cash on YouTube with through affiliate marketing and has done in the past. So I'm excited to dig into today's episode. How's it going, Paul? I am doing amazing. How are you? I'm good, mate. Yeah, feel feel ready for this. Like we didn't do any last week because of the, the five day affiliate kickstart challenge. So, Which yeah, it's amazing. People, <laughs> I don't know if you saw the the loads of comments we got. Um, I posted a few of them, but like li- literally, like pages and pages. I had it made two, at least two pages um, of like just comments uh, of. And there it was like a picture I made, like a mm-hmm. board of just the comments of all the uh, great things people said about that event. So we do have another uh, affiliate kickstart coming up on the 8th so uh there'll be a link down below if you want to join that but yeah i'm very excited about uh getting back on the podcast again yeah it, it's shame. like the, the week off and it's last week was amazing it was so good um and as you say the comments that flooded in were ridiculous obviously ridiculously good but it was just amazing wasn't it um so yeah. obviously selfless <laughs> selfless unintended plug there um, but yeah, that was the excuse, the reason why we didn't do the podcast last week or done any recording. You wouldn't have noticed, guys, because we batch create our content like we keep on telling you to do. So it makes life a lot easier for when things come up, like the affiliate Kickstarter challenge on the 8th of May that you will be attending. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, links below for that. But So let's dive into it. Why YouTube first? Um, I think that's one... YouTube, it, it, one, it has its own traffic source in a sense where people are going there to w- be entertained, look, research something, find out something, solve a problem. So I think mm-hmm. that when people are trying to search and solve a problem, they usually go to YouTube or a blog post versus trying to scroll through their feed on Facebook or Instagram trying to find a solution. People go to Google or you like obviously YouTube is owned by Google too, but to find a solution. So I think that to find those solutions uh, is a great way to provide an affiliate offer that fixes that solution by do- presenting it on YouTube. I think you're absolutely right from a point of view, like um, as you say, like the first place you go if you ever want to solve a problem, whether it's fixing a light bulb or or learning to do anything, you just go straight to Google and YouTube, don't you? Which mm-hmm. means if you want to be in like the top 10% of affiliates, you need to focus on building out a successful YouTube channel. And yes, it takes work. Yes, there's delayed gratification in that. But as you say, like if you don't go on YouTube, you're basically in a red ocean of people, aren't you? Like you're in a red ocean of, of cold DMers and sleazy slidings and, and all these different stupid things that are great lead generation tactics but it's not longevity in a in a in a successful business in it you want consistent consistent traffic all day long without you having to do anything which leads us to that youtube channel so if you are on youtube and you are building a youtube channel like like we are like that consistency and bringing that to the table automatically puts you at 10 or the top 10 percent of affiliate marketers because once they've found you on YouTube and then they go to your socials, when they start getting pitched by everyone, you've already established you're the expert. And then from there, you can grow that channel, keep going, and then you'll just you will always be ahead of the people who just stay on Facebook because you go to YouTube to solve your problem. So now that we've established you need to be on YouTube, I think it's time for some tips here. Yeah? Um, yeah, what tips have you got for me? <laughs> I think that's. I think that it's funny that you you mentioned that the top ten percent, because I you'd be surprised on uh, how many conversations I've I've come up on on DMs, and I don't have a big channel. I have like fifty five hundred, and people are like, "Oh yeah, I saw your video on YouTube," and I'm like, "Oh okay, well like that instantly brings me more credibility." Mm-hmm. So I think having that YouTube channel is just another. Uh, avenue to bring and build credibility for yourself. And so some tips I would definitely have, um, obviously you want something to have a a call to action um, on your 
social media uh, on all your videos that you you have i usually have like um at the very end say something to the extent of subscribe to the channel or check out the description uh for more links below if you don't give some kind of direction at the end of the video most people are lost they don't know what to do um so they need uh some kind of guidance um it's funny because i, I for the longest time i've seen like ads on youtube where you can't skip them and you can't click on the photo uh, or on the video. So there's no real way to actually go to the video or to go to the um, to whatever they're advertising. So I think that if more people just had a call to action, it would be uh, much more, I guess, uh, it would get you much better results and make you much more richer, if that made any sense. And make you much more wealthy if you just had a call to action on uh, your videos. Also, if you notice, all, we constantly through uh, our podcasts, whatever we're doing, we're having calls to action, like in the very beginning of this podcast where we talked about uh, our five-day affiliate challenge and told you to comment down or check out the links down below because obviously this is a podcast and there's no visuals unless you're on our YouTube channel, which you should definitely check out the description down below for our YouTube channels. So having those call to actions, I think are super important uh, in any video, even short form content. What do you think are some good tips for YouTube? You're absolutely right. Actually. That call to action, even whether, and it's surprising how many places you can put a call to action, isn't it? And it depends on the, the temperature traffic and at what level they've come right. in depends on what call to action that is. So if they are a much colder audience, like it's the first video they found, they found you on a, a much lo more loose topic um, around maybe affiliate marketing or how to make money online and you're trying to drive them to affiliate marketing, sometimes your call to action is like or subscribe or comment below or watch this next video, which takes you even further into the rabbit hole and then watch the next video, which is a further into the rabbit hole. Now you've got a hot lead. Then you tell them to click the link in the description or and stuff like that. So it depends on where they're at in their journey. Depends on what type of call to action you put out there. Um, another nice easy one is just slide in a pinned comment. Um, so you can put your comment, you can pin it to the top, and that funnel can be there, um, which allows you to then obviously capture any people who are interested straight away, which is great. Another one, or another one for being successful on YouTube, I'm going to go to. You've got to be able to hook them in. You've got to be able... So whether you are showing up on the, the browse and suggested feature, I think it's the same name, or whether you're showing up in search like or on the on the homepage, there's so many different mini algorithms on YouTube that your content could get placed. You have to be able to, wherever they are, hook them in and get them to just click on that video. Now, some people do it with so many different ways. Like they can leverage... For instance, if we were talking about like constantly putting out content, like like the, for instance, there is it jab jab right hook book from Gary V. Um, left 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 uh, jab 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 right hook. Yeah, so like for instance, if we were talking about constantly putting out content, then we might put a picture of Gary V and leverage that type of thing to get people to click. And obviously, we'll talk about that strategy and just all about like using that thumbnail and title. Has to get users to click. Like getting that click through rate massively increases your chances of that video popping. So before you've even before you've even got to your hook in your video or your body content or your description, your YouTube or your call to action, if you can't get no one to click that video, it's absolutely pointless creating the video. So you have to work on that thumbnail and title to really make sure. Find out what people click on in your audience and you'll be able to tell that because they'll be showing up on your browse feature and they'll be showing up on your searches because you're searching for the same content to learn. So find out what people click, what type of thumbnails they click, what type of headlines they click on and start creating some of the, some of the, those in your own little flavor. Yeah, I think that's super important to add your own, like you said, add your own flavor and don't assume, um, the video you're doing is the temperature that your audience is at because someone might be just uh say for instance you think this video temperature is a cold or a warm uh temperature but you're only saying like oh yeah just go ahead and subscribe when someone might want to actually purchase from you so try to use different call to actions throughout your um 
your talk, your videos, whatever that is, because it's going to, uh, one, it's going to be repetitive. So it's going to train them so that they actually take action. So the first one, they might not actually move. The second one, they might actually not move. But the second video that they watched and the third time that they asked it, they might actually do it after they've consumed some of your content or they've gone down the rabbit hole with you. So yeah, it is super important to have multiple calls to action. Also, make sure that you're focused on uh, content that you're able to constantly produce uh, and make content around. So if, say for instance, you're, um, say you, you join some program and you're uh, promoting cat litter and you hate cats, uh, okay. like you're gonna not do the best job at creating content or do things that your cat likes. You're not gonna put the effort into it or you're not gonna go down deep down the rabbit hole uh, on cat litter because you just hate cats and that's okay. So you need to find something that you are you are in love with and say you're a dog person and you love dogs, like go create content around the stuff that you're actually in love with because then one, you're, the people that are just in love with it as you are, are gonna go down that rabbit hole with you and buy uh, your curated content. Two, uh, your, it's going to show in the way you talk, the way you present the content, how excited you are uh, about the content, because that messaging in video or whatever is going to show through the content versus just being like, this is some cat litter that makes my cat shit not smell as bad versus like my dog loves this stuff. He gets um, like high of the high with his dog ball or whatever i don't know whatever it like there's a difference between energy being something presenting something you're not in love with versus something that you just go balls deep into so i think it's super important to uh do something that you're excited about and that you're wanting to wake up at 4 a.m every single day and do a podcast about so <laughs> Yeah, sorry about that, Paul. But no, you're absolutely right. Like, and you can tell through the energy levels, can't you? Um, for instance, like last week when we were doing the the five day affiliate Kickstarter challenge, you were like, you dropped me a message. I don't know if it was day one or day two, and he was like, you really enjoy coaching. I was like, yeah. I was like, let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on, like, do the work, put it in, um, and all that. And you were like, you just really enjoy it. I was like, yeah. It was like, obviously, it's great to, it's great to. It's coach once a many, um, and right. stuff like that, and you could see the energy levels, um, which means like obviously people were feeding off that energy and people were buying into that energy, which then right. obviously allowed people to carry on and do the work and go through that rabbit hole and stick with us through the five days, and it's exactly the same on your YouTube channel. If as Brandon says, like if you're like, oh yeah, this catlet is really good. I don't have a cat, but it's really good. Like right. you're just not gonna sell it, but is that I bet your Brandon would be one hell of a dog affiliate because one. His dogs are really cute. And two, he absolutely loves his dogs. So you could yeah. smash a dog channel, pal. Um, 100% you could smash a dog channel. <laughs> I was thinking about it, actually. <laughs> I was thinking of starting a, a, another a, um, another blog article, a blog website for dog stuff. But with that, there's um, you really need to go down the niche. And it you have to, to kind of go back to uh, a tip. If I were to go down that, that would distract me from other things that I'm passionate about. And I would be sacrificing something for something else. And even though I would smash it with dogs, um, well, I know that for me, there is some other things I could fo be focusing on that are much more of a passion of mine and uh, would that would be a distraction. So um, I kept that out. I, I was thinking about it, and I was like, ah, eh, you know, I, living off the grid one is already taking up a little bit of time. I don't actually need to add a second uh, channel because then it's just going to cause more work than needed um, versus just providing as much value on the podcast and my YouTube channel as possible. So um, that's, that's why I haven't done one. 
And if you, without doing it, like you've literally nailed it, another one. You have to focus on this, guys. You have to focus on the tips, the strategies, the research. Like growing a YouTube channel is hard, um, and that's absolutely fine. Like no success is is easy. You have to work hard. If you look at anyone who has been successful, they have had to work their ass off. So you have to put that mentality in place that you have to put in that work. So the more you start to split your focus on other things, like trying to grow an Instagram, trying to grow a TikTok, trying to grow a YouTube, like like you will then and then trying to do the research and the focus and the content on all three, it's going to drive you insane. So pick your primary platform. Obviously, we're talking about YouTube today. So pick your primary platform. Do your YouTube shorts, then repurpose them on other platforms and just forget about them. Just let it grow unintentionally. But focus on the work that gets you your YouTube channel growth. Like, don't be splitting your focus onto three different channels at once. Oh, I want to do a faceless. I want to do a relaxation video. I want to do an affiliate marketing channel because you'll just go, ah. Wait until your channel makes you a hell of a lot of money that you can outsource the rest, okay? So at least then you can grow multiple channels and you can probably grow them quicker, but you use a focus on one until it gets you to where you need to be. Yeah, I think that is super important. I think a lot of people... Uh, s- split their focus. There are literally two dogs around and they just both were locked up at the same time. Um, so splitting your focus, I think is not a good idea until, uh, like you said, you uh, grew it where you can then take some of that profit and buy back your time. Mm. Essentially buying back uh, editor, editing costs. Um, so you don't have to edit, uh, you know, all the different things that go into uh production of a, a youtube video and as you grow larger and larger production costs get more expensive and more expensive just look at mr beast and some of the other uh big influencers that are now using youtube as kind of a pay to win in a sense where you essentially put all this money into production and hope that your return uh out beats that uh, advertising man, advertising costs. So I think it's super uh, important to, like you said, just focus on the one, grow it, and then uh, build enough recurring income from uh, the affiliate offers that you're promoting, monetization, brand deals, uh, sponsorships. Like right now, we're actually uh, taking on sponsorships for the podcast um, so that we can uh, you know, provide advertising uh, and support the channel and product increased production and that sort of thing and so in doing so all these different ways you can monetize your youtube channel like we said from affiliate marketing brand deals uh um, monetization brand uh sponsorships what else is there there's um your own program that you can make uh so many different ways you can make money with uh youtube so uh once you get that that money flowing you can start those secondary uh YouTube channels, like you see where people will have their main channel and then have, you know, Brandon's or Brian's clips or, uh, you know, uh, Brandon's or Brian's shorts, you know, where they take their long form content and repurpose it into short form content on these secondary channels. So, uh, yeah, I think that's super important to, and that's just like any business, you take your profits and then reinvest it into into the business. Mm. And as you say, like, obviously, the different monetization strategies that like you've just labeled, like, as you say, like the the sponsorship, the paid ads, like the affiliate commissions, the core sales, the digital products, physical product, like, there's loads you can sell and monetize on YouTube. Um, so once we've got people to click, and once we've like we've picked something that we're passionate about, and we can give good energy to, and then you have to get people in. Like, there's so many people fighting atten- fighting for attention on every platform. No matter what platform you go to, people are fighting for attention because they know the value of that attention. So therefore, like if you're not if, if you're not being interesting in the start of your video, if you're not hooking people in and like getting people excited about what is about to come, whether that is showing part of the middle of one of the most important things that you've said at the front, or like just hooking people in to get people to stay is so crucial. And then tell like telling that story to increase the viewer attention rate then those two things, like the hook and the viewer retention rate, is going to make a successful video. The more successful videos you can make, the quicker your channel is going to grow and the quicker you can start those monetization strategies. Yeah, and it's I think that's one of the most important 
I think one of the most important is click-through rate and then uh, uh, retention. So both of those met, uh, statistics are super important when it comes to growing a channel because the longer you can hold someone on your channel, the more ads uh, are uh, essentially viewed to them. And then obviously the click-through rate. So if they click your uh, thumbnail, then they want to view your channel. So that, uh, not view your channel, view the content. So it, it measures how, um, I guess, if the chances of them actually viewing the content and then how long they actually view that content for. So both those metrics are super important for advertisers so that the advertisers can actually, I guess, show their content to people. And if they're not, for you as a someone who's providing the content, if your content is, I think it's like eight minutes or so, what is it, 8.30, is when you start getting into your mid rolls and how many ads you can actually put in uh, each video. That's why you'll see some people um, kind of just always do, I believe, over just eight minutes and 30 seconds so that they can add that, uh, that's that another add into their uh, video so that they're able to get more ad revenue. Obviously, ad revenue is not the, especially starting out, is one of the lowest pain uh, things. So you should definitely check out and get into adding affiliate links and that sort of thing in your description so that you do get paid because that's going to pay you a lot more than uh, ad revenue through uh, Google. 100 percent mate and as you say like they always say like google ad revenue is like the the cream on the top it's that additional cash right. you've got to be making your money through affiliate commissions selling stuff like all of those different things is how you will grow your cash flow in order to then like pour it into other things the, the google ad revenue will literally just be the stuff on top so when you are like creating your videos there's three different there's a few different algorithms within youtube like obviously, if you're creating a video for search, so keyword research, and trying to rank at that keyword at the top of the YouTube channel, like that will, that will form a different basis on how you start your video, how you create your video. If you're going after the browse and suggested algorithm, that again will be a different method in how you create that video. Obviously, it's a lot more, especially from a, you've got to stand out in that row, like on the side, like you've got to stand out on that side and then create a video that's exciting and keeps people there. Cause if you're not going for search intent, you're going for either rabbit hole or ed edutainment in that side, then you've got to be able to hook them in and keep them and then get them there because they weren't originally looking for that type of video. They found it, found it intriguing enough to click it, which means the search intent's obviously a lot lower, which means you've got to work harder on that front end of the video. Then obviously you've got shorts, which has been one of my favorite things lately. And um, just because the sheer amount of views you can get on shorts, which drive and grow your channel. If you're trying to do that race to a thousand subscribers, you have to be leveraging shorts as well. Now I know you've still got the four thousand hours of watch time to go, but you have to be leveraging shorts. And whether it's um like the seven five to seven second reels to get a load of views, get some subscribers taking clips from your long form to put them into your shorts to push people back to that long form video to then increase that watch time. Like leveraging shorts to grow your main channel is a really, really good way of getting it done a lot faster than what it used to be. Yeah. I, I and it's funny. I've seen your shorts and you've like, it's funny how they take off. Uh, and it's just, it goes to, it's funny to really look at the compound effect in a sense in action. It's you really went hard recently on the shorts and your view count just skyrocketed. And if you are consistent and you constantly put out content and you're able to, I mean, you look at um, Mr. Beast. I mean, he was doing it since he was like a 12 year old kid or something. And now he's been doing it for a decade and he's, you know, most people burn out after a year, maybe two years. And he didn't, wasn't until what, maybe in the last five years, uh, five years of doing content until he became like a household name, household name um, where a lot of people will actually know who he is. And so if you put that, if you start thinking in decades instead of ye uh, months or quarters, then you're going to do really well. Yeah, and obviously, if you want to know like the power of YouTube, I was recently watching a documentary, ironically, not on YouTube, about YouTube. 
Um, but it was a documentary on Ed Sheeran and how he came to where he is. And he actually started on his mate's YouTube channel. So if you want to know the power of where YouTube can get you, like he got tons and tons of views and obviously because he was creating good quality songs at the time. Um, and obviously he wasn't known by anyone and he used YouTube as a platform to get the attention to then now monetize. So like that platform is, it's huge, like in terms of what it can do for you in terms of getting that exposure, getting that growth and getting that monetization strategy. And one of the best things I always love about YouTube is you can pay, put, we can post this podcast today on YouTube and in five years time, this podcast will still be getting views. It will still be making us cash. It'll still be making us obviously some leads and all these different types of things from something we created like a f- four o'clock in the morning, Texas time, like for 20 minutes, and it'll still be making cash and setting us up for freedom for a long, long time. So it makes sense to be focusing on YouTube. Yeah, and just to round it out, like you said, uh, with YouTube, you're to kind of go full circle, circle, you're not fighting, I mean, you're still fighting for attention, but your videos will grow over time and people will search for that content. I mean, I don't know. I've There's a few YouTubers that I've probably watched and they have years of content. I've probably watched all their videos and I've watched like the most recent ones that when they pop up, I watch them. But I can tell you for uh, uh, a matter of fact that all every friend on my Facebook, I could not tell you what their last post was. Um, or, I mean, I, and I have like a handful of friends on Facebook, like less than a hundred, uh, less than 50. And so, um, I could probably, I can't even tell you one friend that their most recent post, but I can tell you for sure the last YouTube videos I've, I've watched that were on, um, and the last few videos of particular YouTubers, because I watch their content quite often versus you Facebook. I'm not scrolling through my friend's uh, feed, seeing all their posts that they made in last year. So that stick, that content is much more sticky, I think, on YouTube, where it, it captures the attention and builds um, that like, no like and trust, I think, much more easier on YouTube than it does on Facebook. But I also, I'm going to test this theory, actually, because... Um, I haven't been doing lives as much on my Facebook. And I think that being able for people to see video, hear you uh, and how you talk and that sort of thing builds that trust and credibility much more easily than just posting uh, pictures and text on Facebook. So um, we'll test that theory and I'm going to start doing more lives on Facebook like I used to do. So yeah, that's it. Nice. And it's interesting that you spoke, obviously, just to just for me to round it off um, about the no like and trust. Like, if you're selling anything online, guys, like, and I was having a chat with one of our students about it the other day because he, he just doesn't want to go on YouTube. I'm like, come on, mate. He's like, no, like, DM, DM, DM. I was like, there's a place. But I was like, my easiest closes, my easiest converters are always from YouTube. I can sell high ticket deals, and I've always been able to sell high ticket deals or recurring income or anything. A lot easier if they've sat, sat and watched my YouTube channel. Like back at the start of my career when I was high ticket closing and closing high ticket deals for other influencers, like he was a YouTube guy and he ran paid ads and organic. And we knew from the first 30 seconds of a conversation whether they had watched this channel or seen an ad and we knew exactly what converted better. And every time organic YouTube converted more than anything else in terms of converting higher ticket deals and just getting people to buy because they can sit there and they can, they can easily lose an hour just watching you, like watching your content and digging in. The amount of times I go down a rabbit hole and like, Oh, right. Okay. Suppose I best go back downstairs and remember that I'm a human being. Like it's just crazy. And so there's definitely huge power in YouTube that a lot of people are too scared to go and capitalize on. And you really do need to, because your affiliate marketing business will blow because of it. Yeah, I have nothing uh, else to add. Uh, perfect. Okay, guys, thank you so much for tuning into today's episode. If you've got any comments or feedback, let us know. It'd be great to um, obviously hear from you guys. And if you want to join the five day affiliate Kickstarter challenge, one is starting very, very soon. Go ahead and click the link in the in the description or the podcast show notes, and we will see you there.
Peace.